Well, hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Moose Henderson and I'm a wildlife photographer. Today we're going to be talking about seven ways that I make money as a wildlife photographer. Now this is my full-time job and uh, I do live an economical lifestyle. As many of y'all know, I live in a tiny house in the mountains of Northwest Wyoming. So my expenses are relatively low, but I'm gradually building up my business. And today we're going to be talking about the seven ways that I make money as a wildlife photographer. But before that, why don't we do something for the children, particularly if they're relatively young. Now I consider this kind of cute. It is also kind of nonsensical, but uh, it's kind of uh, it's kind of the thing that I think is cute. So have your children or your grandchildren look at the following picture of this cute moose and then have them repeat the following words. Wa te mu siam. Now have them say those words a little faster and a little faster. Wa te mu siam. Wa te mu siam. Wa a moose I am. <laughs> okay, uh, so onward with how to make money as a wildlife photographer and the seven ways that I employ to make a little money with wildlife photography. As I say, this is my full-time work and my full-time income. It's not a lot, but it's gradually beginning to grow a little bit and I am able to stay alive and to continue to photograph the animals. So let's go on with number one. Each one of these seven ways could be probably made into its own video or maybe even a couple of videos for some of these topics. Uh, I've been doing most of these items for quite a few years. Some of these items are relatively new. We'll start out with number one and that is stock photography. A stock photography is selling photographs through agencies and the agencies sell these photographs to magazines, newspapers, books, and so on. In total, I have approximately 11 to 12,000 images that have been published in books, magazines, and newspapers. And the majority of these have come directly through stock photography sales through agencies. Now the agencies take the majority of the money and there's two different types of agencies. There's one called a traditional agency, which has been around oh, I don't know, for 20 or 30, maybe 40, 50 years. And then there's a type of agency called micro stock, where they sell images for a very low amount of money, but you're able to make money by the volume of the images that they sell. When I first got involved with this was back in, oh, I guess 2006 or so. And I do have images with both traditional stock and with micro stock. And between 2007 and let's say 2015, I was making anywhere from two to $300 a month. And then after 2015, 2016, things kind of changed a little bit and the uh, agencies got a little bit more stingy with the way that they helped to distribute the money and my sales with stock photography have dwindled to approximately a hundred dollars a month or so but it's still money and the difficulty comes once you put your images with an agency such as Microstock, and these agencies include things like Shutterstock, iStock, Dreams Time, uh, 123RF, and various other 
agencies that sell these. Once you put images with microstock, you're prevented from ever putting those same images with a traditional stock agency because a traditional stock agency just won't take them. So you kind of lock yourself in to never being able to sell those particular images with a traditional agency. Now some traditional agencies, if you ever list images with Microstock, they'll never accept any images that you have. And that's unfortunate because you may have some really good images that could sell on their agencies, but they have a real prejudice towards Microstock. And you know, that's okay. If that's how they want to do business, then you know, so be it. So that's the first way that I make money is through selling images through stock agencies. And as I say, the amount of money I make from stock agency now has really declined to about a hundred dollars a month or so. The second way that I make money is through print sales. And if you go onto my website, you'll see that I have a number of images on my website and these images are up for sale for people who may want to buy them to hang them on their walls or to be able to put them on their desk or various other things like that. I have also sold prints through commercial establishments such as galleries or various shops in the mall and stuff like that. And that's also a good way to make money. I don't sell images through galleries now because galleries tend to have a very exclusive type of contract that prevents you from selling them at any prices other than the price that the gallery sets the price at because they don't want you selling them to other people for a cheaper price than what they would sell them for. And I don't tend to like exclusive contracts. Uh, print sales can be variable. On occasion, I can make fairly good money on print sales. And other times I can go months without selling a print. It's very, it fluctuates a lot as to how much you can sell. Now, if you do uh, art shows and things like that, where you go into these art fairs and you put your prints up in a booth, you can generally do pretty well because you have a captive audience that comes and they're able to see the tangible prints hanging in your gallery and they're able to get a tangible feel for, oh, that print would look very nice hanging over my fireplace. And so you tend to do a lot better if you do art gallery type sales and stuff like that. I have done a few of those type of art gallery sales, but I seldom do it anymore. One, it's time consuming. Two, it's expensive to have all of the stock available to sell art show type of gallery type thing. And three, it's very time consuming. And four, it really occupies your time in the sense that you can't do anything else during the time that you're doing that art show. And it makes it hard to be able to do your actual photography because you're at an art show. You're not out doing photographs. The third way that I'm able to make money is through private photography workshops or also working as a moose guide for other types of workshops. Now this is a fairly good way to make money because your clients come in, you make a daily rate that ranges anywhere from roughly $250 for a half a day or maybe up to $500 for a full day of work. Or if I work as like a moose guide, I may be working for like $350 a day or something like that. And that turns out to be a fairly good way to make money, but it's also somewhat seasonal in the sense that 
Uh, it's very good work during the moose rut, the elk rut, during the autumn colors, wild flower season, and stuff like that. But during the middle of the summer, you'll generally get a very slow trickle of income because it's not the prime time to be taking photographs and be, to be leading workshops. The fourth way that I have tried to make money is writing blog articles. Now that doesn't seem like a way that you can make money, but if you set up a blog on the internet and if you get enough traffic, then you're able to make money through what is called Google AdSense. This is where Google will pay you for the amount of traffic that you have on your site. And there are various folks who will teach you how to do this. And I've attended one of those classes and I started my own blog and I spent, oh, roughly four or five months writing blog articles for this particular site. And my particular kind of blog articles are in a very competitive niche and I did, never did very well generating the traffic. So it's something that has made me a grand total of zero dollars for four or five months work. It is an area that some people are able to do fairly well at. I gave it a try. I flat, fell flat on my face. I picked myself back up again and I've gone on to other ways of trying to make money. Number five is writing books. Now, as many of y'all know, I do write books. One of the books that I've written that has done fairly well is my 50 Wildlife Hotspots. Some of you may not know that prior to writing that book, I wrote three scientific books. These books included, uh, the first one was a microhistological analysis of Yellowstone moose browse, and that's kind of a fancy way of saying how to analyze the diet of moose through analyzing their scat or their poop. And so I wrote a book, a scientific book, that included hundreds of different scientific plates about how to analyze what is found in the scat of moose. And then I followed that up with two more books, one called the Microhistological Analysis of Elk Brows, and then the Microhistological Analysis of Woody Plants of North America. Now the Moose Brows book was a little over 200 pages. The Elk Brows book was a little over 300 pages and the Woody Plant Microhistological Analysis book was well over 500 pages. These books combined have made me a little bit of money, maybe a couple hundred dollars, but they were still a good way to get my feet on the ground and to be able to write books that were very beneficial to the scientific community. When you're a scientist, sometimes you do a lot of work that doesn't generate money, but you do the work because it benefits the community at large. And that is basically what these three books have done. The 50 Wildlife Hotspots was a book that was written for the photography and the wildlife enthusiast type community. In addition to that book, I've also written one for wildlife safaris, and that's a short book that basically goes into just what kind of animals can you expect to see in the Yellowstone area and the Grand Teton area. And then when I was doing a one month long project of watching three Basset Hounds, I wrote three monographs. And these I titled, Creating Intimacy and Impact 
with your wildlife photography. And one of these monographs dealt with a cheaper tripod and tripod head that you were able to acquire, much cheaper than say a Gitzu or a really right stuff tripod, but a tripod and a head that still served the same purpose. Another one was how to change a Manfrotto tripod head to be used with Arca Swiss type brackets and how to also use that tripod head with an electronic flash. And the third one was how to make your own ground pod. And those three will eventually be incorporated into a single book that will sell for, I don't know, less than $9 or so. So this is one of the ways that I have continued to make a little bit of money. It doesn't pay a lot, but it does help trickle in a little bit of money. I am under contract to write two more books in the series of the 50 Hotspot book. One will be 50 Wildlife Hotspots in Yellowstone, and the other one will be 50 Landscape Hotspots in the Grand Teton area. So the 50 Wildlife Hotspots book was really popular, and the publisher has asked me to do two more books, and I'm under contract for those. I have a couple more ideas that follow the same vein that I will be publishing in the future, like the 50 wildlife hotspots in southwest South Dakota, and things like that. So once you get a good idea that catches on, sometimes you can build on that and, and continue to market that particular idea. The sixth way that I am trying to make a little bit of money is off of YouTube. Now, you don't actually make any money off of YouTube. What you make money off is YouTube selling ads as part of your videos. And in order to do that, you've got to do what's called monetizing your channel. And I did a video about how to monetize your YouTube channel, and I'll link that up here in the corner. And once your channel becomes monetized, you begin to make a little bit of money off of every 1,000 views of your channel. Now, it's not much money. It's a few pennies here and a few pennies there. But when added to other ways of making money, it does begin to add up a little bit. And I'm working towards getting my channel monetized. Now, one way a lot of people make money on YouTube is by selling other products. They'll do the YouTube videos, and then with the audience that they develop, they'll sell other products of value. For instance, they'll write a book, and then they'll market that book endlessly on their YouTube videos. Or they'll do like an entire series on photographic composition and sell that as a standalone. For instance, uh, how, to, how to do photographic composition and they'll sell that series for $85. Or how to do Photoshop uh, skills and they'll sell that series for $100 or something like that. That's something I'm not going to do. I'm, I'm going to do the videos and I'll put out all of my content as, as regular content, but I'm not going to sell things behind the scenes as a way to make extra money. If I've got something that I can teach people, I'm going to put it out there in the open and people can watch it and if it brings them some value, then I'm very pleased that it's done that. But I'm not going to put things behind a, a monetized firewall that they have to pay for. And the last way that I'm able to make a little bit of money is what's called Amazon Associates Revenue. If you look 
at the bottom on my videos and you do the show more click thing down there, you'll see that I have a number of products that I recommend. And these are products that I use. And if you go on to Amazon and you click on these products and you order one of those products, then by you ordering the product, it doesn't add anything to the cost, but it does pay me a couple of pennies for each thing that you order. And Amazon does this because I'm acting as an advertising agent for them. I only put things on my site that I actually use. I don't put anything down and recommend it that I don't use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm not trying to make money off of trying to sell everything. I'm only telling you the products that I use day by day. And if you decide to order one of them and you like the product, then I make a few pennies off of it. Now, one thing that Amazon does do is if you've clicked on some of those products and then you order something else at the same time, say you order some diapers for your grandchild, then I might make a few cents off of that because you came to Amazon at the same time and clicked on one of my things. And so they say, well, someone bought this at the same time that they were looking at your product, so we'll pay you for that. And so I might make a few cents on something else that you buy, and that's great. So these are the seven ways that I have made a little bit of money, and I'm sure I'll think of some additional ways to make a little bit of additional money here and there, and I'll probably share those here in the future. Now that we've gone over these seven ways, you may be thinking to yourself, my gosh, all of those added together do not add up to more than a few hundred dollars every month. Except for the workshops, the other six ways are very low income. And why do I go to all of this effort to be able to generate such a low amount of income? It's my desire to be a wildlife photographer and I would rather be out taking pictures than sitting in a laboratory or teaching in a university environment or something like that. I do have a PhD. I have worked as a research professor at the university. I do have the ability to do many other things, but it's my desire to be out with the animals. And because of that, I would rather make a much smaller income doing what I can than being stuck in a full-time job at either the university or in a laboratory or in some other type of environment. So I do survive completely on the small amount of income that I can make from my efforts as a wildlife photographer. And this is how I choose to live. And it may not be a lot of money, but it is what I enjoy doing. And I continually striving to make a little bit more. And as I make a little more, I'm able to upgrade my camera systems or upgrade my quality of life or maybe go out to dinner or things like that. So these are the seven ways that I'm able to make money as a wildlife photographer. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please hit the like icon. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe to our channel. And we put out content at least once a week, sometimes multiple times a week. And I will see you on this channel again very soon. Thank you so much.